Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's presentation in this series, It's Our Time, I Will Go. My name is Pastor Trevor Fikaloma, and I'm the Publishing Director of the Northern Conference. Let's bow our heads as we pray together. Our gracious Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you, dear Lord, that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, the greatest good news of all time. We ask that you may be with us in this presentation and may you bless your sons and daughters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our message this evening is entitled, Go Tell the Good News. At a time when there is not so much good news around, at a time when many are discouraged, at a time when there's a coronavirus and the pandemic and its consequences, we need to be hearing good news. And so I want you and I to turn into the scriptures and there be blessed by God's word. Turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 5 and our three verses of consideration are verses 18, 19 and 20. But from verse 1, you read in the scriptures that Jesus had just landed on the shores of Gadara and there he was met by a demoniac, a man that was possessed with a legion of demons. That is approximately 6,000 demons. And this man approached Jesus Christ and Jesus was able to deliver this man. My brothers and my sisters, I want to tell you the good news is that Jesus saves and that Jesus delivers even today. When those evil spirits confronted Jesus, they requested to be sent into the swine or the pigs, and they did that. And when this young man was restored, instead of that being good news, the people that were tending to um, that, that herd they ran into the village and the whole village came out to meet Jesus. And when they came, the verse tells us, the verses tell us that this young man was seated. This young man was in his sober mind. This young man was clothed. Friends, that should have been good news. But the inhabitants of that city requested Jesus to live. My brothers and my sisters, Jesus delivered this young man and when Jesus was also about to leave this young man begged him and asked him to go with him Jesus message to him was very clear go home to your friends and tell the great things that God has done for you and the compassion he's had for you my brother and my sister has God done something great in your life? Has God had compassion on you? Won't you join us as a publishing department, as literature evangelists, to go and also tell your neighbors, your friends, your close associates, all the great things that God has done for you? Won't you also join us in saying, it is my time, I will go. When you read further in the scriptures, there is another story that is telling us good news. I want to draw your attention to the book of Luke chapter 2, reading from verse 15 to 18. In that story, we are told of the birth of Jesus Christ. And after Jesus was born, the angels were looking for people to whom they could declare, to whom they could announce this great event. Alas, they could only find some shepherds out in the fields of Bethlehem, tending their flocks diligently. They were probably discussing the Messiah and their desire for a deliverer. And lo and behold, an angel appeared to them and told them of the good news that had happened. And the angels told them that to you is born this day in the city of of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The angel was specific this day. 
in the city of David, the Messiah had been born. And the angels could not contain their excitement and their joy because after that announcement was made, the Bible tells us, and there was with the angel a host or a multitude of angels that were proclaiming glory to God in the highest. The shepherds, when they received this message, they said, it is our time. Let us go and see whether these things are so. The angel had directed them and told them, you will find the Savior wrapped in swaddling clothes and in a manger. And when they found it to be so, they afterward went out the entire city and proclaimed the Messiah had been born. And everybody who heard the message was surprised that the Savior was born. The shepherds, as humble as they were, took up the call. It was their time. They were willing to share the good news. My brother and my sister, have you received good news in your life? We as a publishing department have, a, have many resources. We have books that you can sell. We have books that you can give out. We also, in conjunction with the publishing department, with the personal ministries department, Sabbath school and personal ministries, have material that you can go out and share the good news. You can share the missionary book of the year. For example, this one, Hope Beyond Tomorrow. You can share copies of Steps to Christ with your neighbors and with your friends. We've got them in various languages. You can share also books that we have in Afrikaans. It is your time. It is our time to spread the good news. Why do we need to spread the good news, friends? I want to quickly give you five good reasons why we need literature and why we need literature evangelists. Whether they will be part-time or they will be full-time or they are students or they are retirees, pensioners, all are required to finish off the work. Number The first reason is because the time is short. And Romans chapter 13 verses 11 to 12, the last part tells us, For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. So number one reason, friends, time is short. The Lord Jesus has given us the great commission to take the message to the four corners of the world. And one of the quickest and most efficient way that we can do that is by the distribution of the printed page, of the books, because they can go to places that you and I cannot go. The second reason why we need your help, why you and I need to go because it's our time, is because we need to work in unentered areas to take the good news of salvation. In the book called Potter Ministry on page 19, it says, The Lord calls upon our youth to labor as canvases and evangelists to do house-to-house -house work in places that have not yet heard the word. The third reason is because distributing books is one of the most inexpensive means of evangelism. There is no need for tents, there's no need for projectors, no budgets. You simply get the books on your own personal budget and you go out there to deliver God's word to a dying world. The reason number four is because God would like us to prepare a people to meet their God according to Amos chapter 4 and verses 12. Wouldn't you like to be part of that group of people, that army that is going to go out there to prepare people to meet their God? The last reason, my brother and brothers and sisters, is a quotation from Cole Porter Ministry. In summary, the fifth reason is that this is a method by which we can reach all classes of people. And so in Cole Porter Ministry, page 38 and paragraph 3, it says, In order to reach all classes, we must meet them where they are. They will seldom seek us of their own accord. Not alone from the pulpit are the hearts of men touched by the divine truth. Paragraph, sorry, chapter, page 39, paragraph 2. 
it says our canvases are to be God's evangelists going from house to house in out of the way places and opening the scriptures to those they meet. They will find those who are willing and anxious to learn from the scriptures. And so my brothers and my sisters, is there good news for us to share today? Yes, there is. In God's word, the scriptures are replete. They are full of the good news of Jesus Christ. In our publications as a church, there is good news of health. There is a good news of the spiritual truth that we have in the uh, messages that we have. We have good news for families. We have good news for children. We have good news for relationships. Won't you join us as a department? Won't you join the army of literature evangelists? And you don't have to join, but you can get your own group or your own supply of books from your local conference and deliver and begin to share with your neighbors, with your colleagues, with whoever you come across so that they too can make their decision for the kingdom. Will you also respond with it is your time and you will go. As I also say it is my time, I will go. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege we have of spreading the gospel in the highways and the byways. Bless, Lord, the listeners of this presentation. May your Holy Spirit, Lord, inspire us and move us, dear Lord, to finish the work through the printed page. It's our desire and prayer. In Jesus' name and for his name's sake we pray. Amen.